We invite you to be gracious and grace-filled with your feedback as we work through the iterations <laughs> to get us where we need to go. It's going to be a long time and this, until this becomes just the way we do things. Um, so we invite you to be patient with all of it. Um, so we're also rethinking how we worship. During the time of the pandemic, when we were online, worship was obviously very different. It looked just like that all the time. Um, and there were some really nice things that we discovered in that time, right? We were a little more intimate in our worship. We had more voices leading worship, which was a beautiful gift. Uh, and so we want to incorporate some of the wonderful things we discovered in that worship, while also having the mystery and the majesty and beauty that on-site worship, that vestments, that things incorporate. And so we're working on that balance uh, and we will work our way through that as well. All we, we know what we want to do is explore the beauty and diversity and draw our hearts towards God and make this sacred space for community. We will change worship seasonally as we have always done. So this is the season of Advent. We're wearing blue, we're doing blues here. It's a whole new season. And so our worship during Advent will not be the same as it will be after Advent. So we will change seasonally to draw us through the fullness of life. I invite you uh, to read your bulletin. At the inside of the bulletin cover, Zoomers, you can download this. Um, and people online, you can download our bulletin on our website. In the front cover is a whole description of how we worship and why we worship. It has a whole section on the season of Advent. Um, and because our bulletins are now online, if you are an ecologically conscious human who particularly wants to not have paper and you have a tablet device or something you want to use from home, you too can download it on your device and worship from your device. You do not have to. We will print things for you, but that's an option for you. So I invite you to read these, to read the side notes because they describe why we're doing and what they're doing. It's just interesting. So I invite you to do that. We are going to, in this season of Advent, invite more sacred silence into our worship. We're gonna have more spaces to be still and know that God is God and we are not. This is a season in which the world demands busyness and noise and chaos, when in fact, this is a season that intentionally invites us into silence, into introspection, into attention and spaciousness. So our worship will have that built into it. So look for that. We're going to sing our song of praise. Catherine, would you like to describe what's going to happen with that? Yes. So I oh, you need to go to the microphone oh, yes. so people online can hear you. We're working on it. There we go. We ran out of bulletin. All right, friends, can I invite you to share? If you are a family unit and you are not already sharing a bulletin, can I invite you to do that? So that who needs a bulletin? All right, so, all right, if you have an extra bulletin, stand up. If you need a bulletin, raise your hand. There we go. Look at that. This is a lovely Loaves and fishes, friends. <laughs> Loaves and fishes. And yay for running out of bulletins. All new things. All right, Catherine, song of praise. All right, so I wanted to let you guys know that our entrance hymn and our song of praise are going to be the same every week in Advent. So I know you might go, oh, this doesn't look like a hymn. So I'm just going to sit back and listen. Uh-uh. No, no. No sitting back and listening. We are in the same room. We are in the same Zoom site. We can all sing together just the same way we have been when we've been on Zoom. So I encourage you to sing along. This is kind of a version of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. It's very easy. You'll sound lovely. So the entrance hymn will start with this version of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Sing along. Then we'll have our opening acclamation. After the opening acclamation, we'll chant the Magnificat. You'll get the what it sounds like. You can chant along with me if you'd like. I'll be doing that from the back. And then come back in on the chorus at the bottom, which is rejoice, rejoice. And also, we're going to have some beautiful organ music that will be happening kind of underneath some of the readings. So don't be surprised if you hear very quiet organ music. Kirsty hasn't gone crazy. <laughs> It's just there for us to hear the readings in a slightly different way, okay? So you'll hear that during the first reading. You'll hear that during the prayers of the people. 
you'll hear that in various spots. We will do a responsorial psalm, which is what we used to do a million and a half years ago. <laughs> so I will come back up here and I will go like this when it's your turn to sing. So please sing along. You too, Zoom people. Super. Yes, we're going to do more singing. Um, the collect of the day will be read by a worship leader, which is not the practice we had in the before times. It's the inviting more voices into our worship space, which is exciting. Um, we will have a gospel procession. We invite all children to participate in the gospel procession. We do not have children's church during the season, but we invite all children to come with the gospel procession. So I'll announce that when it's time, I will stand up and say, please stand. And we invite all children to join in the gospel procession and all the children can come forward to this space and join the cross and carry the book and go up to do the gospel procession and then go back to your seat. So we invite that. Um, our creed will be led by a worship leader. Again, not what we did in the before times, but in a way of inviting more voices into our space. The prayers of the people. So one of the things we learned and loved in the Zoom worship times was that people typed in prayers and we had so many prayers welling up from the body and we loved that. And so we initially thought, well, we can just have people voice them aloud in the worship space. And people said, I'm not going to do that. Um, and we believe you when you say you're not going to do that. <laughs> and so we have come up with a way to still hold this incorporation. So we have pieces of paper at every one of our entrants that invite you to write prayers on them as you walk into this space. If you didn't do that when you came in, but you have some prayers you would like spoken, Feel free to get up anytime between now and the gospel and go write your prayers on one of the sheets. And so our prayer leader will go collect those before the prayers of the people. Our prayer leader will then read the prayers from our parish prayer list. We'll read the prayers from those sheets. And also, obviously, we will invite prayers from people on Zoom and Facebook to be read aloud in our space. So it will be prayers from our parish prayer list prayers from the people here present on site, and then prayers from the people online. Catherine Duncan will voice the prayers for the people online because she will be monitoring the chats for those things. And so everybody gets to put their prayers in. Isn't that awesome? Yay. And also a note with that, we will be singing our response to the prayers of the people. All right. So after I voice the prayers of our Zoom folks, you'll hear me say, Christ be our light. And everyone will sing back with me, shine in our hearts. And we'll do that every single prayer. All right, so sing loud. So we will do that, which is exciting. Um, as we get into our prayers of the Eucharist, we will have a, a special sanctus to incorporate the prayers of people. One thing we discovered in our time, which we already knew, but really came to light in our time of worship on Zoom is that we love the voices of our children leading our worship. So Catherine, do you want to explain our Sanctus prayer and tell us what page is on so we can look at it? We don't have page numbers, but uh, it's on the page that looks like this. <laughs> the one that says Holy Communion at the top. <laughs> I know it's very helpful. <laughs> so you'll see on Sanctus, we have leaders. The leaders for this will be the quartet. And they will start with saying, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Then everyone together will say the bolded words, heaven and earth are full of your glory. And then the quartet will continue, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. We want this to be joyful and beautiful as if we are waving our palms. And then all the children at the top of your lungs, kids, as loud as you can, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Just Which is very, very it. exciting. It is. And then everyone together will get a chance to say Hosanna in the highest. Isn't that fun? All right. <laughs> so new things, new things. Um, we do have a prayer for spiritual communion in our bulletin for people who are not able to receive Holy Communion here on site with us. We have put in the prayer for spiritual communion so that you can pray that at home as we receive the body and blood. We believe that the prayer for spiritual communion in saying that and having the desire to receive communion that you join with us in physically receiving that communion. It's that mystery of time and space that God causes. And so we invite you to say that at home as we receive communion. And then after we're all done, we will have coffee hour on Zoom. So our Zoomers can stay around and have coffee hour and chat, not so much on site. So if you want a coffee hour, you got a Zoom. Um, we will not have coffee hour on site yet. Um, we are not yet going to be eating and drinking together because masks and we can't eat and drink through masks, but we'll get there um, as soon as the levels settle. 
But if you're here on site and you want to join the Zoom coffee hour, you can always just log into your phone totally. at the end of the service and go find a quiet spot in the building and totally out with our Zoom cool, folks. Have at it. They would love to have you there. I am sorry it took us 10 minutes to explain this, but I think it's been a long time since we've done this together. It's worth walking through it so that we understand what's coming and we also calm our hearts and minds. And so, beloved ones, are you ready, girls? I'm gonna invite us to do what we do when we begin worship all the time at St. Gregory's. Put both feet on the ground if that is comfortable for you to do, to ground yourself in the knowledge that you stand on God's creation and you are part and united with all of God's creation. I'm gonna invite you to be still and to breathe. Breathe in and out the Holy Spirit to set aside cares and worries and anxieties, I'm speaking to myself, that we brought to this holy space and give them to God. Be still and know that God is God and we are not and give thanks for that. So I'm gonna invite, as we do several times in our worship, the ringing of a bell that will ring us into sacred silence. We will have a bell that rings us out of sacred silence. And when we hear the bell ringing us out, we will stand and begin our sung worship with our opening hymn. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Oh my gosh, it sounds so good to have y'all doing that. Sorry. 
<clears throat> Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thought of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in my God, for he has looked down with favor on me. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of Israel for the promise he made to Abraham. be with you and also with you let us pray almighty god give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light now in the time of this mortal life in which your son jesus christ came to visit us in great humility that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To you, Lord, I lift my soul, my God, I put my trust in you. To you, Lord, I lift my soul, my God, I put my trust in you. to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. 
Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. covenant and his testimonies. To you, Lord, I lift my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord. Wait, no. (laughs) A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. How can we thank God enough for you in the return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see your face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God the Father and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make your increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that we may be blameless, before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. The word of the Lord. The children are invited to join Max uh, for the gospel procession. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth, distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world. 
for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then we'll see the Son of Man coming in with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the earth of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Just Please be seated. For the longest time, the ostrich epitomized what I learned that it took to be successful. Seriously, the ostrich. The ostrich was big and bold and fast. You need those things to be successful. And it keeps its head down to stay out of trouble. These were the things that I was told that it took to be successful. Be bold, do the things, have your plan, but keep your head down, right? Keep your head down, focus, keep going, focus on the things you need to do. Keep your head down, stay out of the way, stay out of trouble, don't raise a stink, right? Don't draw too much attention to yourself, especially when things might be rocky. All about the ostrich. So imagine my dismay when I learned not too long ago, actually, that the ostrich does not in fact, bury its head in the sand at all. <laughs> Am I the only person in this room that did not know that? Right? The ostrich does not bury its head in the sand at all. Y'all, this rocked my world. This may seem like a very small thing to you, but to me, it sort of epitomizes the way that things that I thought to be true were absolutely true, right? The ostrich buries its head in the sand. This is a truth around which I built this whole image of what it is to be successful, right? I thought my reality was solid. And then all of a sudden, not so much true at all, which then led me down an existential hole to explore if how I was acting, if the things I had built my life on were in fact the ways that I should be acting and building my life. Now you may giggle at me, but this is true. It rocked my world to find something I thought to be solid was actually not at all true. It epitomized for me the breaking apart the bottom opening feeling when what I thought would be true about my life wasn't true. And so that strong emotional reaction, perhaps you have had this at certain points in your life when things you thought were true aren't, and you feel like the ground beneath you is falling and your response is negative and everything seems to have shifted. And so perhaps it should be no surprise that today's gospel reading 
the beginning of the church year, the first Sunday in Advent, when we want to be talking about sweet baby Jesus and the loveliness of the manger and the cuddlies and the baby smells, and at least the setting up of the decorations and the putting up of the tree, or perhaps the baking or the wrapping of presents and the beautiful nostalgia glory that we associate with this season. And instead, this gospel leaves us unsettled, frustrated, wary, and maybe afraid. It's a talk of massive destruction, of earth-shattering things happening. It is apocalyptic literature, right? Apocalypse is being described in this. And our modern use of the word apocalypse means destruction. And so we hear this apocalyptic literature and we think about destruction and it scares us. But the Greek use of the word apocalypse is not destruction. The Greek use of this word and this type of literature was more about uncovering, revealing, bringing new insight, revelation. And so here we see why new revelation, uncovering, revealing might be the start to the Advent season, to the start of the season where we anticipate Jesus. And we might understand why we start this season, not with the baby in the manger, but with Jesus at the end of his life in the temple of Jerusalem, revealing to people the importance of his ministry here on earth. This huge language that he uses, these images that he uses are supposed to shock us. They're supposed to shake us. They're supposed to have that, oh my gosh, the things I thought were true aren't true feeling. It's supposed to have us question the life we live, the world we live in, how things operate. Jesus wants us. Jesus begs us, implores us to let our understandings of things be cracked. Jesus wants us to open ourselves to the revelation that what we thought was true might not be. And the way the world works might not be the best way for the world to work, and there might be another way to do it. I can feel the panic welling up from those very cracks in my soul already. Do y'all know why ostriches are said to be buried their heads in the sand? Anybody know? It's because they dig nests in the sand. They dig their nests and they lay their eggs in the sand. And so when we see pictures of ostriches with their heads in the sand, they are going down there and turning the eggs so that they are fully protected. The ostrich burying its head in the sand is not in fact trying to protect itself or to stay out of trouble or to keep itself alive at all. It is protecting the most vulnerable thing it can find. Isn't that cool? Jesus lived his life exclusively to orient around, to connect with, to protect, to advocate for, to love, to liberate the most vulnerable people he could find. He looked for the oppressed, the downtrodden, and loved them and cared for them and got to know them and asked questions and did everything he could to orient his life to their salvation. And this is the life, this is the orientation, this is the focus that we are called to have in our lives. And so Jesus speaks this earth shattering truth so that we pay attention, so that we look at ourselves, so that we look at our orientation around what do we build our lives, around our systems, around our structures, and yes, around our church, Around what do we build it? And I'm here to tell you, it hurts. It hurts to see where I have not and do not live my life truly oriented towards Jesus and the least and the lost. It hurts to see where the groups, the institution, and yes, the church that I love are not always oriented around Jesus's truth and the least and the lost. And every time I catch a glimpse of that, I scramble to put my head back down and avoid the pain and confusion it causes me. And I'm not alone. This is human nature. When we feel pain, we want to avoid it. And so we run away. 
many of us in this congregation who have been attending our intergenerational Tell Me the Truth About Racism course, many of us who've been attending Sacred Ground and having other conversations about how the church orients itself in this world after we're breaking through with the pandemic, find that what we thought about the world or our society about ourselves turns out not to be the full truth, sometimes not the truth at all, and it's confusing. And the cracks in our reality hurt and feel like a chasm we could fall through. The Reverend Canon Stephanie Spellers in her book, Church Cracked Open, says, some people still cling to their original closed picture of reality, mostly because they're terrified that if a crack forms, that crack might be the beginning of truly losing their life or life as they have known it. People will do almost anything to not experience that loss. I find that to be true. And yet we know, we know as Christians that to die, to lose something is to gain bigger truth. That is the truth around which we orient our entire lives. That is the core of our faith. If we let things go, if we let them die, life will be reborn new and better. That is the truth that Jesus is bringing to us on this first Sunday of Advent. Jesus urges us, even in the midst of this apocalyptic language designed to open our eyes, says to us, do not let your hearts be weighed down with the weight of things that distract you from the truth. Do not let your hearts be weighed down with the worry. Do not let your hearts be weighed down with the fear that you can't possibly live. Instead, do not give in to the temptation to ignore these new revelations, but hold your heads up. Listen, look, see, and be held by my love, my life, my truth. Jesus knows that when our lives, our worlds seem to be falling apart, when our lives, our worlds have developed cracks, when we are most uncertain, that it is then that we are most able to see God's revelation through the cracks and be touched by the grace of it all. When the earth shakes, when the foundations crumble, Jesus is there raising us to new life, holding us up as we lift up our heads. Maybe instead of ostriches, we need to be meerkats. I love a meerkat. They pop up out of the hole and they look around. Aren't they cute, right? Maybe we need to be meerkats jumping up out of the hole, up out of the safety and looking around, opening ourselves to what is seen around us, to open our eyes, to heed Jesus's call to lift up our heads, no matter what we might see when we see it, to lift up our heads, to see what we might need to let go of within us, to let God's life shine more fully, to lift up our heads, to see how we might not actually be oriented towards Christ and to be open how we might reorient so that we are. To lift up our heads, to see what we might need to let go of that we hold on so dearly to so that God's love can actually fill us and spill out and over. To lift up our heads so we can see the birth and the new birth and the rebirth of the world in the person of Jesus Christ. The Reverend Caroline Lewis, who is a contemporary theologian, says, the birth we anticipate will bring with it deaths we have to accept. As we anticipate the coming of Christ, we lift up our heads. We listen to where we are and are oriented towards God and God's most vulnerable people. We let God's truth bathe us and fill us and hold us. Let those deaths die that need to die and move forward together, healed, restored, forgiven, bathed in the grace of God, step by step towards new life, new truth, and the changed world.
Let us read together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all of the seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternal begotten from God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being and with one love. Through him all things were made, for us, for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He came in turn from the Virgin Mary. He was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in the glory of the judge to living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, and the giver of life. We proceed to the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, we worship the Lord. He has spoken through the prophecies. We believe in the Lord. We acknowledge my baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of them and for the life of the world. Amen. Prayers of the people. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You who dwell in darkness and light, in silence and sound, dwell in the hearts of your people. In hope, peace, and joy, may we wait the anticipation, the coming of Christ, the morning star. Christ be our light, shine in our You who framed the brightness of the first light in creation, dispel the arrogance, animosity, and anger that shatter the unity of your holy church. Fill your faithful people with the radiant light of truth. Christ be our light, shine in our You who delivered your people from the misery of bondage and slavery to the land of promise, set us free from enslavement to division, disunity, and distrust in our public life and labor. Illumine those in authority with the light of vision. Christ be our light. who patterned the stars and called the sun into being, who appointed the moon and chartered the cosmos, patterned the hearts of people everywhere to see in each other the beauty of the universe and the splendor of creation, that divisions of race, class, gender, and ethnicity may be recreated into one common humanity. Christ be our love. You who delight in the complexity and splendor of creation, help us to delight in the diversity of this earth, our island home. Inspire your people to care for all you have made and to delight in all creation. We invite those online to type your prayers of gratitude in the chat and they'll be read aloud. Today, we give thanks for the opportunity to worship on site together, the technology that allows our community to be together online, Megan Eggman, who is expecting a child, 
Matt Geiger, who has given so much time and expertise to help us have this ability to worship together on site and online. The on site congregation gives thanks today for a wonderful Thanksgiving and time off from work, gathering together in the church, answers to prayer, compassionate and educated leadership, life, health, and strength, family, live mus musicians, Catherine, Vicki, Cameo, Cameron, Tobin, and Kirsty, for pets. And the online congregation give thanks today for, for pets, for bluebirds, for children in our service, for the work of so many to have this hybrid service, for all traveling this holiday weekend and their joyous reunions with family, for family and friends, for the birth of Nancy Pedersen's second grandson, Casey, who arrived a month early to Lindsay Pedersen and Mark Giannotto. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts. You who shower comfort and hope to the lowest, the lost and the least, shower the light of compassion on the sick, the sorrowful and the suffering. We invite those online to type your prayers of intercession in the chat. We pray especially for those on our parish prayer list, including Lisa Ralph, Keith and Lee Stewart, David Shaper, Anita, Emily, Fletcher and Hank's families, the Hilario family, Joy, Ralph and Adam Ralph, Paula Clark, Rita Wagner Sloan, Donald Caldwell, Diane Jacoby. The on-site congregation offers prayers for Greg, Michael and Steve, Pam, Lloyd, Virginia, for Polly, Austin, Carol, Solange, Terry, Anne, for Carolyn, Jordan, LaCheryl, and, and Cameron, David, Carl, and Robin, and Yvonne. The online congregation offers prayers for, for Rob, for Cheryl and Young, for Sarah, for Karen, Patrick, Barbara and Carol, for Devin and Valeria. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts. You who welcome into the brilliant light of eternity, those who have died, Welcome those whose lives have been cut short by violence, warfare, and strife. We invite those online to type their prayers for the dead into the chat. We pray especially for those on our prayer list, including Barry Larson, Carol White, Mike Morris, Andrew McLean, Ruth Kettlewell. The on-site congregation offers prayers for Simon and for Scott. Also for Jimmy, Carol White, and Chris. And for those named and unnamed. Christ be our light. Christ be our hearts. May Christ, the morning star who knows no setting, Find us ever burning with the light of love, the spirit of truth, and the wellspring of hope. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Yeah. 
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. Peace. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace. It's so good to hear the voice of our Zoomers. Peace, everyone. That's peace. Peace, peace, peace. 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 I invite you to be seated. Friends on Zoom, if you have any birthdays or anniversaries or traveling for which you would like prayed, if you could type that in the chat and Catherine will voice that aloud for us. Do we have anyone in the congregation who has a birthday this week or an anniversary or who is traveling for whom we can pray? I know we do. Come forward if you are comfortable doing so. If not, you can just stand up, raise your hand. Come on down. From the way back files. Karen's coming. No hurry. We got all day. Catherine, do we have any from the Zoom? Uh, Dan Nicholas and Donna's daughters, Lindsay and Keelan. Birthdays, I all believe. Right. Dan, Lindsay, and Keelan have birthdays. And do you have a birthday too? No. Okay. I'm traveling. You're traveling. All right. I was going to say, do you and your whole family have birthdays? So you're good. You're good. We also have Nicole Caldwell and Valerie Caldwell. Birthdays for them too? Yep. All right, well, let's pray for all of the birthdays. Most holy God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on those who are celebrating birthdays today. May they be filled with your grace and strength and grow in wisdom and grace as they grow to love you more day by day. Strengthen them when they stand. Encourage them when discouraged or sorrowful. And above all, may your peace, which passes all understanding, guide them all the days of their life. Amen. Amen. Do we have any traveling from Zoom, Catherine? Nope. All right, then we will play for Karen, who is traveling. May I put my hand on your shoulder? Would that be okay? Most holy God, we pray for Karen as she travels. Surround her with your angels and keep her safe. May her travels bring her rest and recreation in you. May she see you in new and wondrous ways and the people and experiences she encounters. And above all, may your peace, which passes all understanding, guide her and bring her back safely so she can continue to serve you in the way you have called her to in this world. Amen. Safe travels, Karen. All right, and now, beloved, we used to, in the before times, you may remember, have pretty plates that we passed up and down the aisles so you could make financial contributions that help us to continue to serve God in the world in the way we are called to do, that help us to do things that change lives in the world around us, that help us to radiate God's grace and equip all people to change the world. We're not doing that now because COVID. So for those who are here, we have plates at each entrance where you can drop offerings on your way in and out of the space. You also can pull out your devices. It's okay to do that. You can go online right now. And those of you online can also go to our website at the top right-hand corner of our website. It's a little button that says donate. You can click on that and give abundantly um, to the church and the ministries in the world. You can donate to our general operating budget so that we can continue our ministries here. You can donate to the food banks where we will match dollar for dollar all contributions made to the food banks. And you can also donate to the rector's discretionary fund, which is almost exclusively going to people with housing insecurity in the area of which there are many right now. So beloved, I invite you to be as generous as possible and to walk in love as Christ first loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Help us to set the book before the service, wouldn't it? Because you sent your beloved son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn or proclaim this truth to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. I like it. We give thanks to you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. For in these last days, you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In Christ, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ, you've brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O God, we remember your death. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the blessed Virgin Mary, St. Gregory and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children through Jesus Christ, our savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation by Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen.
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Beloved, these are the gifts of God for you, the beloved children of God. Thank you. 
Please stand as you're able to send forth Margie to share communion with those who cannot be here. Margie, we send you out to share communion this week. May you carry the prayers of all of us as you take this sacrament of Christ's presence. May those who receive it from you be strengthened and encouraged in that community we have together in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Continuing together, let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and singleness of heart through Christ our Savior. Amen. Please be seated. So thank you for hanging in there through our new worship time, through our new technology and worship, and for figuring it all out. We did it! Yay! I cannot say how wonderful it is to have so many people back in the space, to be singing together, to have our Zoom friends in our space. I love seeing your faces while we're worshiping. This does my heart so glad. And while I'm talking about things, it does my heart glad. I hate to put people on the spot, but y'all, two of the people who formed who I am as a priest are here in this room. Uh, the reverends Peggy Muncy and Stephen Boley are here. I don't know why they're here or how they're here. I go down to procession and there they were in front of my face. I almost wept. Um, so welcome to our space. Welcome to St. Greg's. It is so good to have you here with us. Y'all are some of my favorite humans on this planet. It's good to see you. So y'all say hey to them on your way out. <laughs> um, before I get into the many things we have going on, Jack, would you like to come up and give us a word? I'm going to need you to come to the lectern so the people online can hear you speaking. Jack uh, organized and ran for his Eagle Project, a blood drive here at St. G's, and he's here to give us an update. Thank you, Jack. Uh, yes. So as... And just said uh, a little over a week ago, there was a blood drive here in Founders Hall. Uh, I set a goal of 25 pints to be collected and we gladly surpassed that goal. We had a full 31 pints donated. Wow. Woohoo! Happy to see everybody here who showed up and everybody who 
did their best to support it. Um, I would like to say that we uh, have another one planned on Palm Sunday. Is there a better time to do blood drive than on Passion Sunday? <laughs> Just saying. That is April 10th, if there, anybody wants to put it down on their calendar. Uh, I do have a sign up sheet if anybody would like to speak to me after service and sign up for the next drive. Thank you so much, Jack, for your leadership, and we look forward to seeing you get your eagle. Um, in the back of your bulletin are many, many details about the things that are coming. I'm not going to read to you what you can read for yourself, but y'all, we have a lot going on. Um, also, you will find that you have probably received in the mail and you will receive online starting today or maybe tomorrow our Advent devotional we shared with Trinity Episcopal and Highland Park to put together this Advent devotional. Casey Kramer, our very own communications director, did a beautiful job of having pictures from both our congregations. We have worship. We have devotions from both congregations. This will go out in email form, but you should have a paper copy. Every day, you too can spend just a few minutes with God in Advent, open your hearts and minds, putting your head up to see what you might see. I commend this to you. All the things. Um, we also are starting this week, Wednesday, Compline at 7 p.m. on Zoom for the season of Advent. We're joining with several other congregations. Do you see a theme happening here? Uh, to do Compline together on Zoom, we are joining with four other congregations. So each congregation will lead one of the Wednesdays in Advent. It's going to be great. It's all on Zoom. So at 7 p.m., the link is in the newsletter and will be online. I encourage you to just jump in for like 15 minutes of prayer every Wednesday at 7 p.m. and let all of our congregations join together for that. Um, there's a quiet day coming on December 11th. Christmas Eve services are announced. We're going to have one here at 4 and one 7.30 at Trinity Highland Park. We're joining together again with our theme of joining together with other people to be the body of Christ in the world. More information about that later, but y'all pay attention to what's coming because there's a lot of it. Today, immediately following this service, if you are here online and you are on site, if you are here on site, not online, if you're here on site and you are somebody who is a worship leader or wants to be a worship leader, that is altar guild, greeters, what used to be called ushers, they're really greeters, people who read, people who might be interested in acolyting, people who might be crucifying, am I missing a thing? All the things stay for just a little bit after the service and we will talk through that stuff. Um, and if you aren't able to stay, we will do it again, but super helpful if you can stay so we can get more people trained quickly um, today. Um, also, next Saturday from 12 to noon, our very own quartet is singing for two hours, y'all, outside, yahoo, at the Deerfield Winners Market. So let's go take our chairs and our blankets and warm beverages to support our very favorite musicians in the whole wide world. Um, as they sing this Saturday. Another really important thing is once again this year, we are partnering with NICASA, which is a social services agency in North Chicago. I work with them almost every day. They are the people who send me people who are housing, who have challenges with their housing and I help support them. We work together all the time. We are going to sponsor families that they work with for Christmas, just as we did last year. Um, a link for that is in the newsletter. I'm imagining the Zoom people have that link at their very own hot fingers in their chat. You're going to have to do your work yourselves. Um, but please go. Sarah Snyder, thank you so much. She's online um, for coordinating all of this. She has taken all of the things and put it online in an easy sign up format. She will communicate it to you. God bless you for doing all of that detail work, Sarah. Uh, but we have a lot of families. Sarah, I can't remember how many. Can you unmute yourself and tell us how many families we have? Yep, so we have 44 families. Um, we've had one sign up so far. So I would ask, I think people uh, might have, you know, missed the newsletter because it was the day before Thanksgiving and things like that. So I encourage you all to look back on Wednesday's newsletter, click on the link. Um, just so you know, it's you sign up for a family size, and then I will send you the items um, on their wish list. So it's a little different maybe than you're used to from previous experiences, but uh, this seemed to be the best way to handle it this year. So if you have any questions, you can just reach out to me. Thank you, Sarah, for coordinating that. 44 families is a lot of families. Uh, we get the families who no other agency are handling. 
which is what I asked for, the people who are in most need that other agencies aren't gonna be able to help. So these 44 families are counting on us for Christmas. Uh, it is a lot of parents needing things for themselves, things like pajamas and towels, and you all get the deal. Um, so please sign up if you are able to do that. That's it. Y'all stand up, let's be blessed and be sent on our way. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> Beloved ones, may almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of God's blessing and set you free from all sin. Amen. May Jesus, whose second coming in power and great glory we await, make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at Christ's second advent be rewarded with unending life. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forever. In the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Well, I think Shelly's supposed to put us into breakout rooms. I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to do the training today. Can I, oops. Um, so we got, we got the rooms popped up.
Beloved ones, if you are here for liturgical training, I invite you to have a seat. It's so good to see you, Mary. There is fine. If you are here from liturgical training, I invite you to have a seat. If you are not here for liturgical training, I invite you to talk very, very quietly so those of us who are here can talk amongst ourselves. <laughs> 